Hola a todos, sean bienvenidos a God Science, un espacio dedicado a promover el diálogo entre la ciencia y la fe. En esta ocasión me complace en traerles este debate tan importante que ocurrió hace algunas semanas entre el doctor James Tour y el profesor y divulgador científico Dave Farina acerca de este tema tan importante como lo es el origen de la vida, abordado completamente desde una perspectiva química. Sin más, les dejamos este debate, esperamos que lo disfruten, les pedimos al mismo tiempo que sean pacientes, ya que ha sido un trabajo que me ha tomado traducir más de un mes, eh, como ustedes podrán ver, es un trabajo que contiene más de 40 mil palabras, así que es algo que me ha requerido mucho esfuerzo. Así que les pido sean pacientes y comprensivos con mi traducción. Aquellos que quieran apoyarnos, apoyar el trabajo que venimos haciendo, estaremos dejando los enlaces en la descripción de este video y por supuesto puedan compartir y suscribirse a esta plataforma. Disfrute el debate y muchas gracias. Good evening everyone and welcome to Rice University for a debate between Dr. James Tour and Mr. Dave Farina. The topic Are we clueless about the origin of life? My name is Alex Latham, and I am a graduate student affiliated with the Tor Research Group. I will be serving tonight as a timekeeper for the debate. Some quick logistics before we get started. Uh, in case of emergency, there are three exits in this room to either side of me and one in the back. Please only use the exit here uh, to either side of me in case of an emergency. If you need to use the restroom during the debate and you are able to use the stairs, please exit through the back door so as not to disrupt the stage. The restrooms are located in the main building just around this way, uh, down into the door right on the side of this building. Uh, you go in, take a right, and you'll see the restrooms very soon. Uh, in order to limit disruptions, we ask that you please silence your cell phones and mobile devices. We also ask that you please not uh, distract anybody up front with any kind of photography, videography, flash photography especially. This event is being live streamed and the video will be available for free after the event as well, so there really shouldn't be any need for pictures or videos. Uh, we also ask that uh, unless you need to step out, uh, that you do not stand up uh, because that would be pretty distracting as well for the live stream. We would like to thank Rice Events and those helping with the live stream and sound for making this event possible tonight. Uh, we would also like to give a special thank you to Mr. Farina uh, for being here and giving his time this evening, being willing to visit Rice University for this debate. Uh, now the moderator for tonight's debate will be Professor Wayne Guida. He is a professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of South Florida in Tampa and a collaborating member in the Molecular Medicine Program at the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center and Research Institute at the University of South Florida. Professor Guida has also served as president and CEO of Schrodinger Incorporated. He was the executive director of chemical technologies at the Novartis Institute for Biomedical Research, formerly known as Siba Geigy Pharmaceuticals. There, he supervised a group of scientists engaged in molecular modeling, protein X-ray crystallography, protein NMR spectroscopy, protein biochemistry, high throughput screening, analytical chemistry, and organic synthesis scale-up. Professor Guida's current research interest involves the design of STING modulators, that stands for Stimulator of Interferon Genes, for the treatment of cancer, autoimmune disease, and anti-infectives. Please join me in welcoming the moderator, Professor Wayne Guida. Thank you very much, and thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here tonight. I'm glad that Dr. Tour asked me to uh, do this. Uh, we have uh, an amazingly uh, uh, a good audience here. We, I think every, just about every seat is filled. Um, so first, uh, let's just start off by welcoming to the stage Dr. Uh, James Tour and Mr. Dave Farina. Okay, so all of, uh, both of you make sure you're at your neutral corners. Uh, to my left uh, corner of the ring, uh, weighing in at, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not going to do that. Uh, to my right is uh, Mr. Dave Farina. He's a scientific communicator who hosts the YouTube channel 
Professor Dave explains. To my left is none other than Dr. James Tour, uh, who is the TT and WF Chow Professor of Chemistry right here at Rice University. Okay, give me a moment, if you will, to describe the ground rules. So um, the way this is going to work is Dr. Tour will have the first 10 minutes to make an opening statement. Then um, uh, Mr. Farina will have another 10 minutes to make an opening statement. After that, Dr. Tour will take two minutes to ask a question of Mr. Farina. Mr. Farina will have five minutes to answer that uh, question. And a dialogue is permitted during the answering of the question. Uh, after that, Mr. Farina will have two minutes to ask Dr. Tour a question, and Dr. Tour five minutes to reply. And this will go back and forth like that till 8.30. We will make sure, Alex and I, that they stick to the time. <laughs> Uh, but my role is beyond just that of a passive uh, uh, moderator. I mentioned the timekeeping, but in addition, if, I'm, if I hear during uh, the debate something that, in my opinion, is not correct chemically, I will render my opinion. Uh, but I'll wait. I won't interrupt either of the debaters. I'll wait until there's a pause. Uh, then uh, what will happen at um, 8.30 is we will end that part of the debate, and we'll go into a question and answer session where members of the audience can ask, ask questions, and I'll explain exactly how that works when we get to the 8.30 time point. So once again, let's welcome the two debaters. Thank you. Before we get started, I want to do something. I've got a gift for Mr. Farina. Now, I was thinking, what, what could I get such an amazing person? And I, I've got you something that I am sure you do not have. <laughs> this, is, this is something called laser-induced graphene. It was a process we developed in 2013 where a laser can hit any surface that's made out of carbon, and in this case, it's paper and the laser can write a pattern. So what you're going to look at is paper that has been converted into carbon. The carbohydrates have been converted into graphene through the laser action. And so here's what we've got for you. Oh. That's very lovely. It's a nice gesture. Thank you. Is this on? Thank you. Thanks very much, James. So I have, uh, I have 10 minutes for an opening statement. Right. Mr. Farina, as my guest, welcome to Rice University. Unlike Mr. Farina, I have never been in a debate before. So if it appears that I am not a skilled debater, it's an accurate assessment. A major hurdle for the origin of life research is the origin and persistence of enantiopure molecules. The building blocks of the building blocks, as I call them. Enantiopurity means that one mirror image of a molecule prevails to the exclusion of the other. This includes 19 of the 20 amino acids, the monomeric sugars, the nucleotides, and the lipids. But for the sake of getting through, I am conceding tonight to my opponent all those small molecules in 100% enantiomeric purity. They are yours. I concede them to you for the sake of time. So let's address other issues tonight, since my concession has been granted and there's still much more ground to cover. I am here defining clueless. Oh, this, this has gone off. All right. Hold the time a second for me while I log back in here. Okay, they, they, they had to have me use this one because of the way the feeds are working. So um, uh, when this logs back in. Okay, but I, I'll, I'll continue now in any case. I'm here defining clueless in the context of my typical usage. Uh, let me 
open up this document. <laughs> Got to do it. I mean, this is this is just this is just life, you know. <laughs> I I teach in this room, so I'm I'm used to this. This just happens. Okay. So I'm defining clueless in the context of my typical usage. We cannot solve any of the five criteria needed to make a living cell. None of these can be solved. Mr. Farina has complained that I am a religious man. I'm not just religious, I'm deeply religious. Or as he puts it, I'm a quote, super, super Jesus guy, unquote. <laughs> While that's a label that I gladly embrace and I believe that the Bible is God's word, I never appeal to that book of authority in my academic lectures or scientific discussions. Never, unless specifically asked about my religious convictions, like in a church or a religious podcast, I never couple those to my scientific criticisms of origin of life research. I will not appeal to the Bible, to God, to miracles, to Jesus, to God of the gaps tonight. Often, origin of life researchers have a time of the gaps appeal, where they will say something to the effect, over millions of years, such and such happened. Those bedtime stories that are devoid of any precise chemistry may as well start with once upon a time. So I hope that my opponent will likewise not appeal to ill-defined time of the gaps arguments and that he'll stay strictly on the scientific data, the data. As for me, I will stick to the data. The topic tonight is not about me, it's whether there is a valid hypothesis to make a living cell on a mindless early earth. In discussing scientific data, it's not a matter of deception or lies. It is a matter of data interpretation. That happens all the time in science. It's hard to interpret the scientific literature data. And as I do with my graduate students, we learn from each other. They from me and I from them. I plan to address Mr. Farina as I would a graduate student seeking to learn from him tonight. The textbook definition for the characteristics of life is responsiveness to the environment, growth and change, ability to reproduce, having metabolism and breathe, maintaining homeostasis and being made of cells and passing traits onto offspring. A valid hypothesis is one in which there is experimental evidence substantiating the proposed science. An invalid hypothesis is one in which there is no way to substantiate the proposed science. For example, my guest arrived to Houston from Los Angeles. A valid hypothesis would be that he flew to Houston on a commercial aircraft. That is a valid hypothesis because we can experimentally test the efficacy of commercial air travel. An invalid hypothesis would be that he drove here in a single molecule nano car. Though that statement might be true, it is an invalid hypothesis since we have no experimental evidence for its validity. Nobody was present at life's origin, so we will never really know how life originated. But that's not what we're seeking to answer tonight. What we are seeking is an experimentally valid, verifiable hypothesis as to how life might have originated on an early Earth. We must see the origin of life research data, not their unsubstantiated claims, even if those claims are written in their research papers. Mr. Farina, please show us their data. Show their data. My contention remains the same. One day I presume that we will have a valid hypothesis upon which life might have originated, but as of today, we do not. And with each passing year, the cellular target that we must disclose becomes harder to reach due to the increased realization of its minimal complexity. A study in the Journal of Pragmatics in 2021 considered the trend of hyperbole in scientific publications. The authors, Highland and Jiang, wrote, quote, we trace the use of 400 hyping words which seek to promote, embellish, or exaggerate aspects of research papers. Our results show a massive increase in these items, and increases are most marked in the hard sciences." Unquote. So while overblown statements are occurring in all fields, origin of life takes the cake. My opponent's favorite expert, Professor Lee Cronin, said in 2011 that he'd probably create lab life in his lab in two years. He did not. Another, whom he often cites, Professor Jack Sostek, then at Harvard, now at the University of Chicago, said in 2014 that he'd create life in his lab in three to five years. He did not. Professor Dimitar Seselov from Harvard University said in 2014 that life would be created in the lab in five years. It did not happen, not even close. 
Prebiotically relevant means that we are restricted to materials, procedures, and conditions that might have been available on an early earth. These are the five criteria. These are the five criteria that have to be experimentally addressed in order in a prebiotically relevant manner in order to have a valid hypothesis for life's origin. We only have time for five tonight. Polypeptides, polynucleotides, polysaccharides, the origin of specified information, and the assembly of the above components into an integrated functional living system, namely a cell, not merely a random mixture of these. If my opponent is unable to supply all five criteria for life, then we're currently clueless on the origin of life. But since I don't think he'll be able to supply even one of the five, it will show that we're not merely clueless, but utterly clueless. While some would like to portray me as one of the very few people that does not accept the hyped claims of origin of life researchers, I maintain that overconfident supporters of origin of life, like my opponent, are being abandoned by the origin of life research community itself. For example, Mr. Farina's own experts, whom he likes to cite, are now backing away from their own overblown claims. His often cited origin of life expert, Professor Jack Sostek, now says that aside from nature's construct of RNA, invoking of, quote, autocatalytic sets was never chemically realistic, unquote. Hence, the prebiotic relevance of autocatalytic sets crumbles. It's over, according to Professor Sostek. His often cited origin of life expert, Professor Donna Blackman, now acknowledges that there are no known prebiotically relevant autocatalytic reactions that greatly enhance chirality of a substrate. The increases are minor. <clears throat> so, no need to waste our time tonight on autocatalysis. His own origin of life expert, Professor Stephen Benner, an enormous figure in this field, now says that any group of randomly synthesized RNA molecules would afford, quote, 10 million or 100 million more molecules that catalyze the destruction of RNA, unquote, than catalyze the copying of themselves, and quote, this will never give you life, unquote. <clears throat> Hence, the relevance of random RNA to make copies of itself bites the dust. It's over, according to Professor Benner himself. Origin of life expert James, <clears throat> Professor James Shapiro now writes, certain questions like the origins of the first living cells currently have no credible scientific answers, unquote. Evolution <clears throat> kingpin, Professor Richard Dawkins now says, quote, we know little more than Darwin did about how it got started in the first place. We have no evidence bearing upon the momentous event that was <clears throat> the start of evolution on this planet, unquote. My opponent's favored origin of life expert, Professor Lee Cronin, now writes and says on multiple occasions that, quote, origin of life research is a scam, unquote. And, quote, there are lots of layers to the scam, unquote. A scam means a dishonest scheme or a fraud. It's beautiful. It's as if Professor Lee Cronin has been scientifically born again. <laughs> Mr. Farina. I respect your courage to be here tonight. It's too bad that origin of life researchers are not here themselves to defend their own data. Maybe they know the shallowness of their own research, while the less informed cannot assess the shallowness. I'm looking forward to seeing the data with chemical specificity. That's what I will be asking of you, so I'm telling you up front. Not the overblown titles, not their outlandish claims, not the once upon a time over a million years stories but the data to propose a valid hypothesis to the five criteria needed to build a living cell, thereby overcoming our cluelessness on origin of life. Thank you. Mr. Farina, your opening statement, please. Straighten up. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks to Rice University for having us here tonight. Uh, we are here because of James Tour. James is a chemist and also an apologist who lies about origin of life research on the internet. It's quite the double life. In order to understand why he does this, we turn to his faith. James has admitted publicly that he is a creationist. He believes that God created life due to religious scripture, which to him takes priority over scientific evidence. From his website, faith and belief go beyond scientific evidence for this scientist. Anyone who thinks this is not relevant to, this, to the discussion is delusional, as James is openly admitting that there's no science that could ever be done that will convince him that life was not directly created by God. He is ideologically bound to denying abiogenesis. He sometimes pretends to leave room for it, as he did just now, to seem open-minded, but he isn't. 
he's totally dogmatic. Therefore, his opinions on origin of life research are irrelevant, as he is approaching the field not as a scientist, but as a preacher. Of course, James pretends his rhetoric is scientific. He will bring up his H index and list of publications. Less important is the fact that he has publicly admitted that his students do all the work and he slaps his name on the papers. Uh, more important is the fact that none of his research has anything to do with origin of life whatsoever and does not qualify him in this topic, which is not strictly synthetic organic chemistry as he claims, but also astronomy, geology, physics, and lots of other areas James is clueless about. When it comes to this topic, James is a YouTuber. His embarrassing commentary takes place exclusively on YouTube or in-person events for science illiterate Christians who share his biases and delusions. James knows that science is done through the primary scientific literature, and he knows that his inability to publish anything on this topic makes him completely irrelevant. That's why he regularly lies and pretends that he is published in this area, and his papers are ignored because of conspiracy. These papers are actually blog posts in Inference Review, launched by Discovery Institute propagandist David Berlinski, which is not peer-reviewed and exists for the sole purpose of making pseudoscience appear more legitimate. Jim's clueless ramblings do not even remotely resemble primary scientific literature, but he lists them among his actual science on his website anyway. Of course, when facing this topic, James somehow forgets what primary literature is supposed to look like. That's how he initially got into hot water slandering Nobel laureate Jack Shostak. James was complaining about the prestigious journal Nature and what Shostak allegedly published in it and how it doesn't meet the typical standards of the journal. He called Jack a liar multiple times to the delight of his clueless cackling audience. In actuality, it wasn't primary literature at all, but a web article meant for lay people, and there were no lies or inaccuracies, as James continues to claim to this day. His profoundly unprofessional and defamatory behavior has only gotten worse as he now regularly attacks prominent researchers in this field or blatantly misquotes and misrepresents them. And that's why we're here, to highlight Jim's fraudulence. There is nothing to debate. The question as to whether we are clueless about the origin of life is idiotic. We aren't. Apologists like James train viewers to regurgitate the ridiculous lie that there has been no progress since the Miller-Urey experiment of the 1950s. In reality, we have multiple, multiple viable prebiotic synthetic pathways to all the relevant biomolecules and their polymers. And systems chemistry is showing us how sets of these molecules can have evolved over millions of years to produce the first protocell, which we will discuss later. James knows essentially nothing about any of it, but pretends to for his viewers who take him on blind faith, something they are quite comfortable doing. So we will get to James fumbling the science in a moment, but first it is important to establish that James is a brazen liar and charlatan in ways that everyone can understand without knowing anything about science. For example, part of Jim's script is to complain about the primordial soup model. He describes this as lightning striking some water and molecules form a slithering creature that crawls out. Uh, this is the dumbest straw man in history. Yet he insists that all these textbooks say precisely this, and it is taught to undergraduates as well as graduate students. In actuality, the textbooks look like this. They contain summaries of much of the research we will discuss momentarily. Syntheses of biomolecules, ribozymes, autocatalysis, and other complex concepts. So he's just lying. He's trying to make science he doesn't like seem infantile and stupid. Another way he downplays the validity of the field is to pretend that almost no one is working in it. He claims it's a boutique field with no more than a dozen teams examining the problem. That's a lie. There are thousands of scientists working on this all over the world. He needs to lie about this because it's much more difficult to claim that thousands of scientists are all either corrupt or stupid while only James knows the truth. A dozen is much easier to swallow, so he lies. He also pretends to be well-read in the subject. He isn't. He has admitted that he's read less than 5% of the lit literature on the topic, although in reality, over 3 million papers have been published since 2016, so he's read maybe a thousandth of a percent of the literature. More importantly, for the few papers he has read, the diligence he projects is a facade. As to anyone knowledgeable, he reveals a level of incompetence that is shocking for someone of his stature. Take, for example, this study by Stephen Benner, a researcher James regularly slanders. Here, Benner was showing nucleotide polymerization over basaltic glass to form RNA. James notes that Benner washes the glass thoroughly with hydrogen peroxide and ultra-pure water, and then throws his hands in the air about how this makes the study not prebiotically relevant, because he is washing away trace magnesium that would impede nucleotide polymerization on the early Earth. 
In his profound ignorance, James neglects to realize that basaltic rock is specifically rich in magnesium, information that anyone who had taken Geology 101 would know. Furthermore, he wonders where, oh, where could one find hydrogen peroxide and ultra-pure water on the early Earth, as though its use makes the study not prebiotically relevant. In reality, these are used to destroy biological material like bacteria that would contaminate the results. So, in fact, the washes are done specifically to make the experiment prebioti prebiotically relevant. This example is crucial because James will focus much of his empty criticism on claiming that research is not sufficiently prebiotic. But remember this example where James was so clueless that he does not even understand what the researchers are doing and why. This is his primary tactic. He skims the supplemental section of a paper, invents a technical flaw out of thin air, and pretends it negates the results of the paper, and by extension, origin of life research in general. But it gets much worse. James regularly botches concepts not just in geology, but also in his own field. For an example, we return to Benner's research where he synthesized ribose in prebiotically relevant fashion. James doesn't like it one bit, and when confronted with a 13 CNMR spectrum demonstrating the presence of ribose, uh, he not only pretends the data is invalid, but he goes to town with meme after meme, cartoon after cartoon, childishly mocking Benner for his garbage data. Here's his laughing Spanish guy meme where the whole crowd laughs in unison at the idiot Benner who thinks he got ribose when it's actually a mess of a billion compounds. But the joke is on James as his pathetic commentary reveals that he can't even read a 13C NMR spectrum, something he should have learned as an undergrad. James compares the spectrum to that of pure ribose when the sample is ribose borate, a different compound, with broad peaks due to rapidly interconverting forms. The billions of compounds are actually just noise as the vertical axis is expanded to highlight the wider peaks. This abject failure has been confirmed by every chemist I've corresponded with, from Benner himself to J. William Suggs, professor emeritus of chemistry at Brown University and many others. The idea that James can't do something that an undergrad could do is astounding, and whether his brain ceases to function when examining this research, or he is deliberately lying to a gullible audience with no clue what he's talking about, his credibility is reduced to zero with this example alone. <clears throat> so that's a brief summary of James Tour. He's a toxic individual and pathological liar who actively promotes science denial and slanders diligent researchers. Or in my case, he scours the internet for clips of me in music videos to commit character assassinations. Or unleashes a barrage of insults about how Dave doesn't know chemistry, even though most of his students use my organic chemistry tutorials to get through his unbearable course. <laughs> He baselessly shouts hype when his own research is full of hype. He whines about being accused of believing in the God of the gaps when he objectively does. He publicly calls for the halting of an entire field of science he doesn't understand just to shelter his fragile, archaic faith. But today, finally, with no desk to hide behind, every tactic will be elucidated in real time, and he will be made accountable for his lies for everyone to see. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I will. We now turn to uh, Dr. Tour, who uh, will ask a question. One of the things that we have to make in order to have life are polypeptides, where we take amino acids <clears throat> and these amino acids have to couple. And when they couple, it will form a dipeptide. <clears throat> this dipeptide is one of thousands and thousands and thousands that would have to form. If you were going to make a polypeptide, you'd need at least 100 of these for a very small polypeptide. <clears throat> Mr. Farina, show me the prebiotic chemistry that would do this coupling. 
Be my guest. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't need the board. I. So this was my second prompt. So I guess we'll circle back to this. But um, yeah, you keep going. Show me the references in your uh, in your in your content. But um, so you're missing a mountain of research, uh, literally a mountain of research that demonstrates this. So uh, here's one. Condensation of amino acids to form peptides in aqueous solution. So we've got sulfur-4, oxidative model. Uh, carbonyl sulfide mediated, pep prebi uh, mediated prebiotic formation of peptides. There's another one. Uh, this that one does not do it. And the two you showed do not do it. This is called James. disparaging. D, K. They do not do it with these. Okay, so what is the, Lehman's a fraud? Gadiri's a fraud? Are you ca calling them oh, fraud? They look, published look. a paper, carbonyl sulfide mediated prebiotic formation of peptides. So if you're saying they didn't do that, you're Show me the example in there. I studied this. I looked over every paper you, you put up. You have never studied anything in this area. Are you kidding me? All you do is go, show me the papers, and then I show you papers. Here, let's see if I can find that one exactly. Yeah, sh show me the one exactly that does this in a prebiotic fashion. Show me. It's not there. Okay. I'm asking you to come up and show me the chemistry. James, you keep I don't need to write papers. on the board. I brought actual papers. This is actual research. Okay, show me the papers. Show me in that paper this example. Okay. This is called. Okay. This, this is, is called the one you wanted. James. acid. James. This is called lysine. James, look. This is the Gadiri paper. Here's the scheme. You want to you go through that? that? But aqueous, aqueous room temperature, you get oligopeptides. Okay, and it jumps to 80% yield with prebiotic oxidizing agents. But like not, not with this, because what happens is this would participate, this oh, would participate. Oh, you want to do the side chain thing. Okay, well, we've got research for that, too. This, of course, I'm speaking to the side chain. This is not glycine. Uh, That's not prebiotically relevant. What that has not nothing to do with prebiotic. Okay, that how about this one? That sulfur compound was made separately in dichloromethane using HOBT, which is a coupling agent designed by human beings for solid phase synthesis. There, That's how they made the bio. Are you saying bio. sulfur is not available prebiotically? It doesn't matter what solvent H, they use. No, HOBT was the, the compound, that SH compound that you just showed was made in a separate reaction. That was in, in a separate reaction, and he describes that. Okay. I can show you in the paper. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you don't like that one, how about this pounder one? Uh, Pounder, Jax, regioselective peptide formation. Acylated amino nitrile. Uh, right. Wait, hold on. I got the scheme here. It's not in there. You're going to look and look. It's not in there. I studied every one of your papers. Mm -hmm. Pounder doesn't even use uh, uh, amino acids. He uses an amino... Amino nitrile. Amino nitrile. That's a, amino nitrile. That's a totally that is not different an paper. Amino acid. James, that's not the same paper. You're no, talking about a different there paper. There is no coupling. Look, he got coupling with lysine, regioselective lysine ligation, the most selective peptide ligation that tolerates all proteinogenic side chains. But he did he this does not with do all side an chains. amino acid coupling. He's got. What are you talking about? Prebiotic catalytic peptide ligation. There's no amino acids there. He's yes, it's amino acids. Okay, so so what go, are you go to the about? equation of well, that. I don't, go to the equation of that. I don't have that one, but you're just lying. You're also no, shifting the goalposts, though. I'm not lying. I'll show you the paper. Because, by the way, you, you pretend that there are no papers, that there are no papers that show any peptide formation in water. I just showed you a ton. You're shifting but goalposts by complaining about the side chains. How am I shifting chains. the goalposts? These are the but, ones you've got to do. If you, can, you can't do it with these active side chains. You cannot. But he did. Counter didn't do it with the active side chains. He used an amino nitrile. Okay, so there are no amino no, 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 acids. No, 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 James, you're talking about a completely different paper. Peptide ligation by chemoselective amino nitrile coupling in water. That that's is an a amino nitrile. It's that amino is a nitrile. different paper. It's not amino acid coupling. Uh, I know, that's a different paper. He takes amino acid. This is just a different, this is a diff he's not going through peptide bond formation. It's a different, right? So he, you have peptides, you have, you have amino acids condensing. That's peptide formation. He's figuring out a different synthetic pathway that doesn't do coupling, but it doesn't matter. There's a million of these, right? Condensation by wet dry cycling. Hemoselective Not, amino nitrile coupling. This. I'm asking you for okay. a specific reaction because half of the amino yeah. acids, half of the amino acids have active side chains. And these guys play this game of not including these ones that have carboxylic acids, not including the ones James, that have amines. This is an acylated, you can't do this coupling. Acylated amino nitrile plus unprotected amino acid uh, hydrolyzes the pH 7 right. to form a dipeptide. Which amino acid? Hydroxylated ones, never carboxylated, never the aminated. All proteinogenic side chains, all from Protein amino nitriles. James, I'm telling you, he did this with lysine. Okay, so the side chain thing is not a problem. So forget the fact that you can't handle that 
right, that peptide formation in water happens and has been demonstrated by about a dozen of these papers that I've shown you. Only now with an activator, as you said in your second series. Yeah, chemical your activator. Series, Prebiotically your first, plausible chemical activator. Your first activator. series, you never said this. As, with an activator, you're not coupling so free amino acids. Okay, yes, we've reached you're the not end. Coupling. We've reached the sulfide. end of the five minutes. Um, it now, it, it, yeah. <laughs> So I just have um, one quick comment going back to the NMR, and that is when chemists, organic chemists run NMRs, they typically don't run them with boric acid present uh, for a, um, uh, if you're going to run a um, uh, C13 NMR of ribose, you want the ribose to be as pure as it can possibly be. Um, but but he was doing it, chemistry on borate minerals. That's why it was ribose borate. Uh, so now it's your turn to ask. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, we'll get back turn. to the peptides in a second because that was my second prompt. But um, <clears throat> let me. Uh... <clears throat> One minute. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll continue looking at research in a moment, but first I can't resist confronting James about some of these lies he's been telling. So uh, let's list a few and get some answers. So first, the textbook thing. Primordial soup model is lightning and then a slithering creature crawls out. And that's what all these college level textbooks say. Uh, again, no, they don't. He made that up uh, like a liar. Next, this boutique field of a dozen researchers thing. Uh, of the millions of papers that comprise this field, I went through a handful of the ones I've read and made this list. There are thousands more. Pretty dumb lie, huh? And uh, let's add one more. Uh, when I had some scientists on my content to help expose James as a fraud, one of them was a friend of mine, organic chemist Bruce Lipschitz, who explained how James was objectively wrong about peptides being unable to form in water, as I just showed you, which I'll prove with about a dozen papers, or I did, and will continue to do so. Uh, this hurt James so badly that he spun a ridiculous lie about how I took an unrelated clip of Bruce and stuck it in my content behind his back. This was so idiotic that I had to get Bruce to make another statement specifying that I requested the clip from him and that I had permission to use it, though James did not have permission to share their email exchange. In his emails with Bruce, Bruce or in his emails with James, Bruce explicitly states that he was responding to the claims James had made. There it is in red, but his viewers can't read, so they just ate up the fabricated story. Now, again, remember, I'm demonstrating conclusively that James is a pathological liar. This is important because James also lies about science that goes over most people's heads. So by proving to you what a liar he is, you are now primed to realize how he is lying about all the complex details of origin of life research as well. This way, you won't just nod your head and assume James must be right. So uh, let's begin. Let's begin with the textbook thing. Um, why would you tell this dumb lie, James? Why would you tell this lie? This lie. You think you've been taught things that are whole thing about molecules in the body. Okay, so there is a primordial soup model, and there is no understanding of what's happening in this primordial soup. And you talk to people, and this is exactly what they see. They talk about the primordial soup model in all of these textbooks. That's your question. This is the primordial soup model. It just means some molecules in water. That's what it means. Look, you were absolutely clueless on James. polypeptides. You never gave me the coupling for that reaction. I want you to notice, I'm going to narrate. This is my time James. now. I want you to notice, no, no, no. he didn't answer the question. I invited him to come up to show me the chemistry, how this is done. No, I he did. did not. He did not. And now you want I me did. to say, so now this is no, the question. The question I is, I just told you it. the He's primordial soup it. model James. is nonsense, and this is in these textbooks, you think and this is taught over and over turning again. turning into slithering creatures is in textbooks? Show me the textbook. Show me the textbook that says molecules form into slithering creatures. Because this is Show exactly it. the model that the, mo the molecules come together. These form higher organisms that come out of the water. Molecules this is form higher organisms that come out of the yes, water. Yes, Show me the textbook that shows I don't that. have the textbook. I because showed you. There I they are. There you. they are. The smelly soup model. There, you have the list right there. James, I showed That's you. That's from my, my video. You have the list. This is what the textbooks show. Ribozymes, but, autocatalysis, but does, does, all does the that things text, that you No, no, no. Go, go, go back. Go back to, to my yeah. slide. Go back to my slide. There. St uh, yeah. Go back. No, this no, is No, 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 no. Go one forward. You show the text. All right. No, now, don't change it. Now, which textbook were you referring? Because I said right there, it says miniature C, prebiotic soup. Those are quotes 
from each one of and those do they rocks show in there. molecules forming a slithering creature? No, they don't, because that's a lie. And you're not going to run out the clock. How about the dozen people thing? Does that look like I, a dozen I, people to you? What I meant by that, the number of people that are doing the complex organic Sutherland powder type synthesis. This is exactly no. what Benner told you. No. Benner told you people that all it's over a the world. very Benner small. Told me I have hundreds no, of No, Benner papers. told you on the, on the video that there's a, small, there's a small number of people that are still doing the Sutherland type of complex synthesis. He says most of the area Origin is not of life doing that. The community is a boutique community. It's a small number of people, it's a dozen people. It was in That's reference to the, no. the number of people that are doing the no. complex Sutherland. Type the synthesis. origin of life community. The origin of life community. You're talking about the field in general. How about the Bruce thing? This was pretty dumb, right? He just took one of the guy's videos and stuck it because in. Because when Why I contacted Bruce, mm -hmm. Bruce said to me, I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I was unaware Dave of this. Asked me he to said it in the email. Some of your you're not writings. showing the whole email. And I have... specifically about what we are doing, and does this show? No. Why don't, why don't you show you the page? Why don't you show the page where he said, does I had no idea that this is wrong. there. Look, I published the whole email. Yeah, yeah and you're only here, showing he the one. He says that I asked for the no, video, the, and he's talking about you. And then here you go. No, you, you don't go, want to show the one he where he said, where he said I had no idea. I think he should apologize. You're not, you're not, not going to address anything on life. This was pretty. You can, this was a pretty dumb let's lie. Try this is a really a malicious lie. Instead of people shouting at each other, so uh -huh. maybe take turns. I think an apology is in order for this lie, James. <laughs> Pretty dumb lie, pretty dumb lie to tell. I think we can all agree that we are establishing the pathological nature of his lying. Well, then you're blind. He just took one of the guy's videos and yeah, let's, stuck it in. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, we have one uh, minute and 11 uh, seconds left, nine, eight seconds. Well, it doesn't sound oh, like I'm going to get an apology in 11 for seconds. James. Okay. We're, we're as far as this, he says that I, I, I called Jack Sostek a liar. Yeah. I, I did. And I, and Jack Sostek sent me an email. He said, you were pretty hard on me in that talk. And I said, Jack, I'd like to call you to apologize because I was wrong to do that. I said, give me your number. He gave me his number. I called him. We spoke about this. He said to me, Jim, if you would join us in this origin of life research, we would get this thing solved. We had a very Why'd good conversation. Why did you say this was a you nature You totally article. made that up. Because if you had spoken to Jack Sostek, nobody made me apologize to him. I offered him my apology, Let me and show he you the primary it. literature, the journal nature. And I Does apologized this look like the journal to him. And you, but you continue to call his work uh, utterly, ba no, what did you call it? Ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. About yeah, it, these it is right? utterly ridiculous. Yeah, but when, he, when he says he's going to have life in his lab in three to five yeah. years in 2014, and now he says, I can't even make the yeah, RNA. Who cares? who cares? You lied about this. Look, the structures are. Fine. Oh, no, no. E e e e that slide, you can speak to Jack Sostek. He said to me, Jim, that slide was not well done. That was a copy from another article in Scientific and yet American. The structures are correct. No, Jack agrees with me. That was poorly done. There's no stereochemistry on so that sugar. When it's there's an no stereochemistry, okay, I'm gonna it's call, not rival. I'm going to call it close no to this part of the session. Uh, let's move on. It's um, Dr. Tours. Um, Two minutes to ask a question. Prior okay, my second question. question is. Uh, let's also try to uh, see if we can uh, stick more to the science instead of diagrams. Oh, I would show. love to stick oh, to the science. Oh, that was my only prompt for the lies. All right. It's important to establish Polynucleotides. that James is a liar. Polynucleotides. You have to be able to make RNA. You have to be able to take this molecule and hook it together many, many times to have a dimer of RNA, abbreviating the base this time as B, abbreviating the triphosphate as P3.
What you have to be able to do is show me chemistry. I'm asking you specifically for chemistry, yep. not a bunch of nonsense here. Show me the chemistry not a bunch to get of this, this reaction to go such that you get coupling between the three prime hydroxyl to this five prime site. So you need three prime, five prime coupling to the exclusion of two prime, five prime coupling to the exclusion of branching. Every article that you cited in your videos, every article that you could ever cite that shows this coupling, shows this scrambling, you get significant amounts of 2,5, significant some amount of branching. And that's why this chemistry doesn't work, and that's why your own expert, Jack Sostek, even says that Benner's work, Benner's work, where he, he talked about this thing, was, was just hyped up. There was nothing there because he says he went with the hype he did not go with, 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 with the, the right couple. Show me so the chemistry. Two minutes Show me this chemistry. Okay, so first of all, this is completely idiotic. Uh, our, uh, nucle nucleotide polymerization has been demonstrated on Montmorelite Mont 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 clay for decades. Yes, yes. And with, with 30 to 70 percent to and five. I asked you for three five, which is what you need to have life. Do you life. want to do me a favor here? Uh, I want you to read the, the title of that paper there. It's by your buddy, Jack Shostak. He's done some research on this. Yeah, I know. And Jack Sostek even says he cannot get it. Functional uh, art, except for tolerance for non-inheritable 2,5. How much tolerance? How much? Montmorillonite clay is 30 to 70%. Is, what's the first word in that paper? Functional. So we're talking about RNAs that still have catalytic behavior, despite having a mixture of 2,5 and 3 prime. His, three his five amount linkages. of 2,5 to 3,5 is not 30 to 70%. If Jeez. you have... If you have a 0.1%, you're okay, because you'll no. have runs, but not 30 to 70%. Show me the amount. Your guy Deemer never tells us how much is there. James, this, look, the and research And Benner never told us how much is there. Functional RNAs. So it doesn't matter how much 2 prime, doesn't matter oh, how much it, Oh, it certainly He's does. Allowing them and, to and what about branching? My God. It's not there. It's not Let's there. See. Nobody has ever done this prebiotically. You're going to be looking through your papers a long time. It's never been done. Without an James, enzyme, it is never been done. You are completely done. clueless. It's this over. Has been done. It's over. You can't make RNA. There's no life. You can't make RNA. There is no life. You haven't made peptides. You You're haven't right. made RNA. It's over. James, nucleotide polymerization has been demonstrated for decades on clay. You are literally pulling this out of your ass. This has been done for decades. You guys, none of you people know this research. None of you people know this research. You're just blindly trusting him. All right, let's try to, let's try to have some civility, please. The adsorption and polymerization of nucleotides on clay minerals has been demonstrated for decades. James is lying, and people who are cheering for him have no clue what he's talking about. You're just blindly believing him. I'm sorry. Okay, let's look at, let, let's look at it on clay. Here is, here is the reference on clay. Here is the reference on clay. Here, on Montmorillonite, what did he get? He got 67% 3,5, which means you have 33% 2,5 of the wrong linkage. One out of every three is wrong. Here he gets 75 to 80% 2,5. So now you have the vast majority 2-5. That's what you get on clay. It's right there, montmorillonite clay. And it doesn't matter. That's what Shostek showed in One this paper. One out of three doesn't matter? No. The oh, it matters three, tremendously. To two, the three prime no, and two prime. No, no, no. If you, you have a fraction of it, RNAs. you're okay. One out yeah. of three, Jack Shostek would never. How much does he have there? How much does he have? Tell me. You read the paper. It, it says functional RNA. I James. haven't seen that, that paper. You're bringing in other things. papers, which we agreed you would not do. James, you're, but, you're but, presenting and now yourself tell me as how an much expert in this field. I don't know. I've not read that paper. You read it. Tell me, how much 2-5 does he have? I don't remember All every right, single detail we go. of the paper. You don't remember because you don't want to remember. You read the paper. You brought that in. We were not supposed to introduce any papers that had not been in our videos. That you agreed to. James, here's what would happen, though. If, if, this, if you genuinely cared about this question, what you would do is you would go to Google Scholar, and you'd put in some keywords, and you'd find this Shostak paper. You would not You're find that. You're hiding from Th it. That has a trace. You, you, on clay, you get 37%. This says 80%. 
You can't have one out of every three be a wrong linkage. You would never code for a peptide with that. It's over. How do you know? It says functional RNAs. You because have no it's idea a what trace, RNAs Because do. it doesn't work. Do you understand that the RNAs have catalytic function? Right. Do you understand that RNAs no, have catalytic function? Even if you have function? the wrong enantiomer, it doesn't work. Even Donna Blackman has said that in the papers you that you cited. You have no clue what Donna Blackman says. You quote mine her. You have no idea what her research is about. You just pretend to. Okay, so there we go. I asked him to come look, up here and show me the chemistry, just like I would do with a graduate still, student. I said, show me the chemistry. He function. did not. I mean, you Done. can say that. Done. You can't do this. You can't make you a can cell. You can't that, do you that. Can cheer, you can't make a cell. You're it's lying. over, buddy. It's over. Wow. Lies and cheers, amazing. Lies and cheers, incredible. So just from a chemical point of view, though, we would need to know what functional RNA meant. Having function catalytic and, properties. Function, I mean, because RNA has Look, many functions. It still has so. recognition and catalytic function. It lowers the melting point of the duplexes by de destabilization, so separation can occur under reasonable conditions. And what was the percentage? But you got everything else written down. What was James, the I'm I don't know. That, I'm sorry I don't, that know. I don't have an you encyclopedic know, knowledge of very careful. Of he would tell us. It's okay. in that paper because but that's what Benner, you're, you're I mean, basically I mean Sostek calling Sostek got upset with thought. Benner because he didn't do it. But Sostek would put that in no, the paper. No, that's another great one. The, the Benner thing. Yeah, we're going to get to the Benner one. Okay, it's time to end that part, but I want to just pause. To have functional RNA, it has to do at least three things. It has to serve as messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and... No. Uh, 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 messenger uh, RNA. You're, messenger RNA. You're talking about features of modern cells. We're talking about prebiotic nucleic acids. But it ultimately acids. has to do that. So what function is my question, did he show that it, 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 it uh, performed? Uh, it has to at least I mean, more, it, perform it, it, one of the three. Ultimately, it's going to have to perform all three. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's uh, replication. I'm not sure exactly in the context of the paper, but he's saying that two prime linkages don't matter. As though you people have any fucking clue what any of us are talking about. Oh, I know about RNA. No, you don't. You have no clue what either of us are saying. Deal with it. Answer the question. Anyone who thinks oh, nucleotide polymerization to form RNA has not been demonstrated is clueless. It's been demonstrated by hundreds of researchers and is just Show us! Okay. Right, right here! I here. just showed you! Do it! You've got hundreds of examples. Show us! You won't come up. What you do you won't want do me it. to draw on the you board, won't do it. James? What do you want you me won't to do draw it. on the board? Clueless. Okay, well, let's go to the next uh, uh, round. Uh, yeah. That's why I brought a bunch of research James pretends isn't real, and you're all pretending to understand right now. Yeah. Google? What? Okay. All right, let's, what are you let's, about? Uh, let's go to the next round. Dave, you're next in terms of asking a question to All right. So we've been talking Dr. about Jordan. peptides and clake acids, so I'll give uh, a prompt on this too. So let's talk about biomolecules. Amino acids are ubiquitous and even form in space, and Strecker-like synthetic pathways have been known for decades. Amino acids polymerize to yield peptides. Again, James has humiliated himself even tonight, claiming peptides can't form in water, no matter how many references I show him. Here are some of the papers that we've been talking about. He keeps trying to talk about side chains because he hasn't admitted yet that this does happen. Peptide formation with uh, prebiotic chemical activators. There are countless studies uh, generating this. So the objections, like the reactions from side chains, I'm very sorry, but they have been addressed, showing regioselective coupling even for lysine. When he objects to this, he's just lying about what the paper is about. Then don't forget condensation by wet-dry cycling, as well as totally alternate synthetic pathways that don't involve condensation. Next, plenty of studies show prebiotic syntheses of nucleotides, and their adsorption and polymerization on clay has been studied for decades. These catalytic surfaces also protect RNA from degradation. <clears throat> this type of chemistry has been taken out of the lab and shown to work in prebiotic analog conditions, primarily hot springs where biopolymers form efficiently and become encapsulated in vesicles. James ignores all of this research and just complains about aspects of experimental setup, like running reactions under argon, which is done specifically to avoid contact with the oxygen that wasn't present on the early Earth. Or he pretends prebiotically plausible reagents like DAP are not prebiotically plausible by only showing research from the 1950s instead of current research. 
He will wonder how nature knew to phosphorylate the five prime hydroxyl to get nucleotides, oblivious to research demonstrating that protection by borate minerals yields precisely that. In general, he ignores decades of research and just spews his script about how we don't know how to get these molecules. But we do, so let's continue talking about this. Okay, so there were so many there. You know, this is called rapid fire so that you can't answer anymore. I'm just showing you all, all right, the research. So, so you, you cited this paper where they used sulfur-4. Okay. This is, th this is not just water. It has activation. Once you activate, it is not amino acids polymerizing in water. As soon as you activate, it goes from being zwitterionic. It goes from being zwitterionic to being not zwitterionic. It functionalizes on the carboxylic acid. That proton gets freed up. That proton gets freed up on the amine, and then it can do the attack. You're describing so what the, the no, mechanism no, no, wait, wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. This is my, my section. Let me, let me get no, done No, this here. is us alanine, talking together. Alanine, phenylalanine, and serine. That is what he used. Alanine, phenylalanine. He had serine. He had the OH. He never used the ones that have the carboxylic acid, the, the, the uh, aspartic acid that I told you, he never used the lysine. Yeah. This is the paper. That's you, why you couldn't get up you are because this the didn't goalposts. solve it. I read the paper. It didn't solve it. Look at the list. You claim look that at peptide the list of, formation look at in the water list of, was impossible. Of the ones that he used. You claim that it's peptide, not there. James, you claimed that peptide formation in water was not possible. Countless no, times it was, in your oh, No, you said you never you said, said that oh, these, it's, it, it no, happens, you but said not it with in lysine. your second series. You said with suitable activation. Yeah, That's chemical the key, activation. Because they're no longer zwitterionic anymore. You said James, it was no. You amino said acid, pe you said peptide formation in water was exergonic. And in the very paper when you were showing Lee Cronin's work where he showed delta G was positive, it was endogonic, you said it's yeah. exer exergonic. No, I didn't say it was exergonic. You absolutely you did. You no. said it's exergonic. It's, it's, no, it's endergonic. I know that it is endergonic. No, Look at you this go slide. back to your video when you were discussing Lee Cronin's work, you said it's exergonic. No. Nature does this with chemical activation. And, and, the activation and it goes energy, back the other way. And then the barrier is very large. All right, did you James, have, you, you have a, you're, you're flailing here. You asked here. me one specific Amino question. Amino acid, I, you showed sulfur me a reference. trioxide, dipeptide. What's wrong with that? All right, Explain I'll, I'll tell me. you what's wrong. Don't move your slide. Oh, Don't yeah. move your slide. Okay, I'll no, tell I'm you what's wrong. You look right there. You look right there at the first one is alanine, phenylalanine, alanine, phenylalanine, serine, phenylalanine. None of them bear a carboxylic acid side chain. None of them bear an amine side chain. Again, Don't you see how he cherry picked this thing? Posts. So it can only. Goal I'm posts. not moving any goalposts. Is this Pep pre? Is this prebiotically plausible pep di dipeptide formation? Did not, you give that? Not the di dipeptide I showed you. You for these. If you don't even have for one, these if residues, you don't even James. have one. Yes, this you only gives one. you the, it doesn't give you the functional ones. Amino acid, sulfur trioxide, no, dipeptide. Only for half of the amino water. acids. So what? What do you mean, you, so what? But you're not you even can't, conceding that. You have to have 20 you're amino acids that. That participating. They load the chemistry. They keep selecting the ones that only work under their conditions. They can't do it with the free carboxylic acid. They you, can't do it with the free amino You pretend that peptide bond formation in water is impossible. I've showed you all of that I didn't say research. it's impossible if you have activation. You only said that in your second series, and you know it. No, you've never you said You know it. No, you've never said with activation it's possible. You keep saying it's impossible, and you even play the clip of me going, I have references, and then you just cut it oh, off. Only and you continue to pr don't pretend you that the research isn't there. Don't you understand? Of course, I explained this to you, even with Bruce Lipschitz's was proper activation in his... Bruce Lipschitz's uh, research was not prebiotically relevant. I never said it was. I was just having a chemist explain how you're wrong, because it's useful. No, no, but I'm saying the activation part was there. The activation part. You what, have another what specific question. What does that have question. to do with sulfur trioxide? Yeah, uh, let, bring up another picture. Are you saying another, sulfur trioxide you came with, is not with periodically rapid fire. I, can, I, I only remember this one. Do you have another question for me? Huh? Do you have another question for me? The question... Come on, bring it there, on! There's no question. I explained a bunch of research about peptides and RNA that you're pretending isn't real. Right? You're just shifting the goalposts about lysine, and I'm showing you another paper. Mr. Farina! Here! What go, do you go, want go, me? Go! 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 You don't do it. You why, just talk, talk, why, talk. Why Show would me I the try, chemistry. Why would I try to draw I told you I would speak to you as I would speak to any James, graduate student. And I would I, tell them to come if, to the board if I wrote and write. This, come to the board and write. If I wrote Show me the chemistry. on the board, would you suddenly accept it? Why are you so obsessed with me using Because chalk? you can't show a chemistry that's going to give you the 3 5 to the exclusion of the 2 5. You're, you're you mentioned jumping around like night, crazy. And I showed you 37%. This 37%. is called the Gish Gallop, everybody. This is called the Gish Gallop. Oh, peptides. You got peptides? 
Okay, you don't get the lysine residue. Oh, you got the lysine residue? Well, you can't get the two prime linkages. Oh, they got the two prime linkages? They can't get this. This is his tactic. I'm showing a mountain of research that invalidates all of his objections, and he's just denying it. I don't care what any of you guys are saying. None of you, none of you have any capacity to read this literature, and you're just blindly believing okay, James. You have no this, idea what he's talking about. Let's close this session. I have a couple of comments. One is we'll have uh, the opportunity for the audience to ask questions at the end, so uh, we'd appreciate it if the audience would not ask questions at this point. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> uh, number one. Number two, I want to make sure everybody in the audience understands stands the term exergonic and endergonic. So that has to do with the free energy change, the standard free energy change uh, in a chemical reaction. If the standard free energy change in a chemical reaction is negative or um, uh, exergonic, it means the reaction goes in the direction as written. If it's positive, that's endergonic, and it goes in the other direction. Yep. So just, just to, to, to uh, clarify that, and, uh, and modifying the carboxyl moiety makes the reaction with the amino group work. So that's great. Okay, and then lastly, um, the uh, argument that you guys are having, the debate, I should say, that you're having <laughs> about the um, uh, nucleosides, I don't hear anything about the stereochemistry. I, I've already given him the stereochemistry of all but small it, molecules. But it's, it's I've conceded right. that. That's my third prompt, so we'll, I've conceded we'll, we'll get to homochirality if that's going to happen enough, in a second. Okay. so important, of course. Yeah, it's very important, but I conceded it so I can just get to these other things. Right. Okay, polysaccharides. I want to take two of these and couple them together just to make a dimer. That's it, just to make a dimer here. Make a disaccharide of glucose. What we've established here is that in this coupling, this is down. This is the alpha configuration at that center. We've also established that <clears throat> this hydroxyl did not participate. This hydroxyl did not participate. This hydroxyl did not participate. In order to do this biologically, not prebiotically, but biologically, you have to use an enzyme that has about a thousand, about a, a, a thousand amino acids in it. So the probability of that forming randomly would be 20 to the thousand. I mean, it's, it's just a crazy big number. If something's bigger than 10 to the 50th, you don't have enough time in the universe. Here, you wouldn't have enough time in a billion, billion, billion universes. Is there any chemistry that you can show me that's prebiotically relevant that would do this coupling? And you will say, oh, I argue that only enzymes can do this. You don't have any enzymes because you couldn't make them here. You couldn't make them there. No enzymes. You're lost. You do, we already established you don't have enzymes. There's no enzymes yet Shouting on the prebiotic totally earth. You couldn't make them. You're clueless on that. Okay, time, okay, is, well, time is up. I showed peptide formation and I showed RNA formation. And this entire talking point is a non-starter. When you can't do it with half of the amino acids, you didn't make it with the peptides. When you no. can't control that 2,5 linkage that's 30 to 70 percent 2,5, you haven't made any functional mm. nu nucleotide. Okay, so you're, you calling don't have Shostak, those two. you're calling Shostak a liar because functional RNA was the first two words in the title of the paper. So you are actively yeah. calling you Shostak a liar again. Remember what I told you about the title of paper? Remember what I told you about? It's a bunch of hype. That's why I said, Mr. Farina, show us the data. Show us the data. And you said you read the paper and I you did, couldn't though. find out. I showed you, you a bunch of papers. You couldn't find in there how much 2,5 he has. You just start Sostek shouting is and very then people careful. clap for he you. Would, he would supply that okay, number. Okay, James, so check it out. You're, you're, you're completely unhinged and wrong about everything we said about polypeptides and polynucleotides. However, let's 
take that out of the equation, okay, because you said you're going to give me all the molecules, whatever you said earlier, will you concede that this is a perfectly viable explanation for biologically relevant polysaccharides? You only came out with that in your second series. In your first video on me, on your first video, second you series. said, these just keep hooking on the end. Only when I nailed you on it did you come out in, the second, in your second one and he, say, he oh, said, I meant said, it had enzymes. Okay, no, he's, no, and, and in all, truth, with enzymes all, you can get it, but you don't no, yet have you're enzymes. You're talking about peptides. You don't you're have just enzymes. lying about what I That's said. That's why I put polysaccharide number three to show okay, that you so, can make so enzymes. So you're wrong, and we do have enzymes, but if you'll grant me the enzymes anyway in this magical world that you've invented, uh, where, will you concede that this is a perfectly viable explanation for biologically relevant polysaccharides? Enzymes did it, just like they do today. Can you wrap your head around that, James? Uh, give, give me a minute to, to wrap my give head around Give me a minute this, to please. know what enzymes just, are just, just and give, what they do. Just, just give me, give me. If a... enzymes exist, can we get biologically relevant polysaccharides? Yes or no? Here is the enzyme the answer is that yes. do this. This is the enzyme that does this. It is 98 kilodaltons. It's 20 to the 842. Mm -hmm. That's 10 to the 1094 yeah. possible scenarios. If you have now, anything more is, is that than the enzyme that does this 10 today? To the or 50th, is that the enzyme you don't that have enough time in ago. our universe. In 14 billion years. Wow, big the, numbers. Big numbers, yeah, guys. Yeah, big numbers. So this is the type of so enzyme James, that you would have to James, have. So this is an enzyme that exists today. Yes. And is the product of 4 billion years or however many billion years of evolution. Not sure when this exactly came about. Is it possible that another enzyme that doesn't have this exact sequence could perform this chemistry? Yeah? Well, let, let's take a look at that. I mean, or, or you could no, just no, answer let, the let, question. Let me tell you something. Let's take a look at that. This is a little molecule, right? This is uh -huh. a little six carbon molecule. Sure. You know what it took to make this? It takes 11 enzymes, four of them unique, and four activators, and these 15 steps today to make it. You're telling me on an early Earth there was some enzyme that magically wait, wait, wait. put are, are this you, molecule you're, together. You're, this takes 14 enzymes. You're talking enzymes. about a monosaccharide? This is, this is James, remember Benner's monosaccharide. research? Remember monosaccharide. Barnes? This is 10 to the 65,000. Foremost makes sugars. Foremost reaction makes sugars. What are you talking about? You're talking because about ribose? Because they've never been able to separate those. For, they've never huh? been able to use those sugars for anything. Because what do you mean? They're, because they're so contaminated. Name me they're one so person that has no. Name me one person. Mm -hmm. One person that has made a stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose. Stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, and that could ever separate it from the mess that you get. Why Zero. Would they, why would they have to separate it? Nobody. Why would they have to separate it? You have to separate why? it. Why? You have to separate it in the lab because you need to characterize it because you're a chemist. No, because Nature doesn't no, need to, to take do that. it on to the next step. There's so many. You, what, Molecules what, 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 that are in a what, mixture what can't did, do chemistry? What, what did Lee Cronin tell you? In the foremost reaction, I don't know, reaction, he's not my you favorite billions, scientist, like billions of compounds. Yeah. In seconds to hours, you get yeah. billions. And that's why they do all this research on mineral surfaces, because it tamed the mineral surface didn't, taming the common The mineral corrupt. surface didn't take care of it. You want to no, get into did. what Benner did? Remember the NMR spectrum? Remember okay. the billions the, the, of the, compounds me, okay, and the you NMR want, you spectrum want me to that you can't read because problem? you're a buffoon? Here's Benner's problem. All right, you want me to address that? We'll address it. Right, Foremost here, here, gives here, you here. sugars. I'm sorry, James. I don't know what to tell you here. You're just in denial of reality, and it's unfortunate that you cannot read a okay, 15 CMR spectrum. Okay, here's Benner's reaction to make his, his four compounds. Sure. Here, here's his reaction, okay? So here he goes through this. What did he do? Here's the experimental procedure. What he did is he silated it. He silated it with this N-O-bis trimethylsilo trifluoroacetamide. He silated it, he ran, and then he filtered it twice. It was filtered twice before it ever got on the GC to filter out many of the things. That because he, he's and, doing characterization, and, James. No, no, no. He has to no, verify he's trying to, No, he's he telling got. us he made four compounds. Here, here's the four compounds he says he made, okay? James, do you understand? But what do you think all these other peaks are? What are all these other peaks that he's yeah, even he filtered out? he got five now, different sugars. Now, he, let, let, let's even just say it was four. Let's say he just made four. This is pathetic. No, no. The, You're let covering me, let me, for the fact well, that you let, can't let read a 13C NMR spectrum. Here he gives his half-life. He gives the half-life of each of these compounds on his borate glass, on his col colmenite. Here is the half-life. You know what half-life means? That in a few hours, half of it is decomposed. What did it decompose into, Steve Benner? I asked Steve Benner this very question. You said it has a half-life. What did it decompose into it? And then these he never got back to you because he's tired and of you know what Steve Benner him on said the internet? To me? You know what Steve Benner said to me? He what said nothing. He answered every other question but that. Then, so I wrote to him.
back in January. I tried to understand from him how did he get that. Now, let's even say, let's say he did have just four compounds, and he made 200 MERS. That would give you 10 to the 120 different RNA molecules. 10 to the 120. Remember, 10 to the 50, 10 to the 90 is the number of elemental particles in the universe. Okay, we're a little In the bit. universe. These numbers this are guy made Dr. 10 to the 120 different molecules. It's totally useless. Totally useless. Have you seen this, this one by do. Joyce? We're a little bit over, so we need okay, to go I'm down done. to the next uh, All right. Molly. So, who asks now? Uh, okay. Yeah. Is that me? All right. Uh, let me get to my start. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's talk homochirality. Living organisms use L amino acids for proteins and D sugars for nucleic I've acids. I've given you all the Many... chirality. I've given it to you. Yeah, this is my two minutes, James. Keep quiet. <laughs> so first it should be noted that Dave doesn't know chemistry. Farina had to teach James the definition of homochiral. He was using it improperly. But more importantly, James either fumbles or ignores all the research in this area. This all started when I cited a singular paper talking about stochastic crystallizations of amino acids. In his content, James deflected to another paper, complained about EE and yield for a while, and totally ignored the data in the paper, referring to this train wreck as having a field day compared with my ability to actually discuss the paper properly. If James would like, I can get him up to speed on stochastic crystallization tonight. But to give a brief overview, we know that threonine and asparagine crystallize as one enantiomer. Research has shown glutamic and aspartic acid to do the same under metastable conditions, plus co-crystallization of all others in tandem with asparagine at yields and EEs James pretends aren't real. Beyond this, deracemization has been demonstrated via sublimation, so even racemic crystals can become enantiopure. Donna Blackman has done a lot of work in this area, so James decided to quote mine her like crazy in his content, pretending some things she said about parity violation somehow describe homochirality in general. In reality, her review, Spoilt for Choice, from way back in 2007, already summarizes many of the ways homochirality can have come about, which means we don't know precisely how it happened, only because we know of so many feasible options. Then there is research showing how homochirality can have evolved at the polymer level rather than the monomer, but still prior to the emergence of life. And then more research discussing homochirality after the simplest life emerged. Here is a handy chart depicting all the possibilities, so there are lots of places for us to begin this discussion. Okay, I, I just want you to understand what the man has just done and he keeps doing is he's reading exactly the script from his YouTube video. He cannot speak chemistry no, on the fly. He's reading the debate. script from his YouTube video. That's I mean, exactly I'm what he's not, doing. So, I wrote so, this for so this. let me answer this. Because it's two you, minutes, you, you, and I like to pack. Look, I've already given him the chirality. I, I gave it to him, but he has to come back to this because yeah, he's got but nothing else. Yeah, you keep else. saying we're clueless right. about so chirality. So your article so we're talk for about choice. It. What you said, your exact words. They're here on the screen. You said, Mr. Farina, you said, spoiled for choice, we know of too many ways that homochirality can have arisen to say for certain which one it was, her own words, unquote. It, I got this from his YouTube video. Well, that's not what the title is. Let's read the title with me. Spoiled for choice, assessing phase behavior models for the evolution of homochirality. Wow. He said the title was one thing and it's a totally different thing. Now, he goes on, Let, let's look at the paper. Let's look at the paper. Now, she says, she, she's, giving here, she says, in this magazine, Chemistry World, which is not a mainline journal, she oh. says they are talking about models, and she's disagreeing with them. He says they are saying it's spoiled for choice. This is not what she's talking about. She's talking about phase behaviors here. So this is, this is the magazine she was quoting from, and then she says, solution solid equilibrium, time is on our side. Dave yeah. says time phase is behaviors. on our side means that, James. that time doesn't hurt us in physics. That's not what she meant. She's just using this as poetry in the sense that she says the next one, good things come to those who wait. James, you, shed, so you th said that, show me the data. You, you yeah, I'm, I'm showing data? you the data. What you she remember shows when you couldn't no, read what this she, paper? What it was she really shows funny. in her own paper, she shows two methods, a kinetic method and, James, and a thermodynamic method. You're running method. out the clock. The thermodynamic, I don't know what you're talking about. I showed you I'm about not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. You haven't the started. thermodynamic you haven't method anything. and the kinetic method. So here she says, simply sublime. Are you going to say that that means something? No. She's yes, just it using means the term. Something. Now look at her references. So here's the reference section. 
You, do you go know what to sublime those references. Means? Do you know what sublime means? References. Sublimation. Of course, sublimation. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Sublime. This is, but she's saying simply sublime. It means sublimation. She's not. There's nothing deeper so, here. You're trying to say that there's something deeper. The time is so on our this side. Is a, you this is said a method. In the video, this is a method to by which that. crystals okay. and, and so become a Nancy O'Rourke. Let's look at her papers. You're let's look at the papers that she cites. This is a review article. So we go to the exact papers. Here's her exact paper. She's using chloroform. She's using DMSO. How relevant is dimethyl sulfoxide and chloroform in a prebiotic You're cherry sense? cherry picking. A lot of yeah. people do this in what water. What do you mean I'm cherry picking? You put it under non-prebiotic conditions, you can get synthetic chemistry to go. This is from Donna Blackman's own paper. This is the paper she cited in the review. The review doesn't give you detail. Then. You look up You're the other. You're cherry picking this one is, aspect of the review. This is her review article. Let's Remember look at another. Remember when I said page. he combs the experimental here, here, section here for tiny detail paper, he thinks invalidates the study? Here is the, the paper for sublimation. All right? Here's the paper she cites for sublimation. You look it up. This is the paper by Cooks. What you do is you, you take your material here, you take your material, and you, you put it in this. Uh, what does it have to do you, with the origin you, of you, life? You, you, because we're going to see if it's really prebiotically relevant. You put it in a hot tube. That's at 175 degrees. And right next to it, you put a collection system that's at minus 78 degrees. Yeah, on an early Earth, that's really going to be possible. And, and, and so you have something 175 degrees, something at what minus 78 study degrees, trying to and it's sublime. Now, 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 no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're I'm not done. So she says time, it's sublime. She's she says in, a phenomenon in order for this that thing, and then in order for it this thing, in order for this reaction to All work, right. she says this is her own paper. This is your paper, the one she cited. He sa she says, if the first enantiomeric in in the imbalance was brought to Earth by fractionation of the organic yeah, space dust, which is totally possible, by a sublimation, and then it landed in a pond and magically crystallized under these very stringent what do you mean chloroform magically GMSO crystallized? conditions. You couple these two crazy hard things together, then maybe when we could get When the temperature goes there it down, is. things That's your crystallize. Paper. That's Holy your paper. Smokes. Read the paper. Look Man, at the experimental. Look at the references. You're just, it can't be this done. This is complete incredulity. It's going to be coming from one thing to the other. Can't James, be done. Do you understand that we can get enantio enrichment by co-crystallization? You're going all over the place just so that you don't have to talk about the papers I'm showing you. Do you see all 12 of these amino acids are resolving at once? It's stochastic, so it's random every time, and you can get very high EEs. I'm not, Remember I, when you I, pretend I've these EEs it all real? to you, but I'm telling you, these are under amazingly stringent conditions but they aren't. that are very But they hard. aren't. But they aren't. But they are. But no, they are. But I they showed aren't. you the setup. I showed no, you the setup. You showed, me a, you showed me something that Donna referenced as a proof of concept that she then takes into account for origin of life research. But you have to do that. Paper. No, no. The sublimation, She's saying this sublimation, is chemistry that has been look, demonstrated I've given with you some apparatus. Even the amino acids I cited in that paper. That paper, you James, got 1% of you, the pure material. Let's you got 1%. One it it's one, a very one difficult thing. But anyway, I've conceded you that to you. have made a 10-hour course you keep, on You keep coming back to this. you say homo chirality, we're clueless about it. You just said homo chirality. Oh. Oh, there's the word. There's the word. Homo you chirality. You used it over and over again in your videos until you talked to Donna Blackman. You used it over and over again. You yeah. have many references to homo chirality you, referring uh, to small content, molecules. You talk about how we're clueless about homo chirality all the time. That's why I show this to show okay. you that we're not. All right. Crystallization. Okay. Sublimation. Okay, time, These are processes time to move to by the which next this round. happens. Thank you. You can't hide forever, James. You can't hide forever. Just a uh, quick comment about homochirality and enantiomerically pure. Uh, they uh, started as different terms, but chemical technology and, um, not, not technology, but t uh, uh, chemical nomenclature changes all the time. And there's been a blending now of people using homochirality when they mean enantiomerically pure and vice versa. So, I've so never heard anyone say homochiral glucose and have that mean something. Uh, accurate. Uh, and, and we used to talk about stereospecific reactions and stereoselective reactions, and those have become blended now. Mm -hmm. They yep. have very those uh, also mean firm, different things, firm so. uh, uh, definitions, mm -hmm. but they're unfortunately used interchangeably, and that happens with, that's already happened. That's just an that, error, though, because they do have very specific definitions. But, but, but like, uh, but organic chemistry is a language, and languages change, mm -hmm. nomenclature changes as well. Mm -hmm. Over time. So yeah, but specificity I, and selectivity mean different things. So I think we should push back on stereo, people. Stereo selectivity and stereo specificity. Yeah, or okay, can, specificity, can, can, can we get on? Because we got to. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Specified information is the next piece. Specified information. We have to have some information for the coding in a cell. 
Here is Lee Cronin, your favorite what counselor favorite? What on are you Origin about? of Life. Here's what he says. He says, because there's some contingent information embodied outside the genome. He goes through and he says how people have claimed to have made cells. This is where he's explaining what he means by origin of life research is a scam. It is a scam. I say they're clueless. He says scam. Take whichever term you want. This is his favorite guy. He's come around. He's born again now. He That's says, but coming back guy. to the scam, the scam is if we just make this RNA, we've got this. You know this fluke event? We know how that's simple. Let's make the phosphodiester, let's make ATP. We've got that part nailed. Let's now make another molecule and another. And how many molecules are going to be enough? And then he describes Craig Venter's work, which I talk about all the time. And he says, uh, he says, Venter says he made life. He says, not quite. He facsimiled a genome from this entity, and he made it and he, in the lab. And then he put it into an existing cell. He said he he had to take an existing cell that has a causal chain going back to LUCA. LUCA is, is the last universal common ancestor, not the first cell, but the cell from which all other cells on Earth are presumed to have come. He says there was something outside of this. He says you couldn't make a cell from scratch. He says, but even today, all of synthetic biologists cannot make a cell from scratch because there's something contingent information embodied outside the genome of the cell. This isn't Jim Tor, the religious guy, saying this. This is Lee Cronin, the non-religious guy, saying this. He's seeing what I see. This is what I'm saying. Where does the specified information come from, Mr. Farina? Where does it come from? Tell us. Here, take the chalk. Write it for us. Any, anywhere you take want. Take the chalk. Write it for us. Tell us. Don't show me research. From? Take the chalk. Please, take the chalk. Uh, okay, so Venter is a synthetic biologist. He's not an origin of life research, researcher. Uh, so that is not actually terribly relevant. There's some overlap, but that's not how life began. So when you take extant life and strip things away, that is not directly addressing the origin of life. So you're Where's taking the a completely information? different field. Information is in nucleic acids and peptides. No, that is, that is like that, that. Nucleic acids don't convey information? Are you joking? There, there, is, there is no information there to give you the prescription you need. What, what do you, you mean, what, no information? Yeah, because what I'm telling you is it has what is called Shannon information. It's information from randomness, which is not the specified. The sequence of monomers you need is the, specified is the information. information. This man is seeing it. Even Benner, you're the sequence ben, you, you, you want to quote what Benner says about this? I mean, I, I, mean I, I have that quote too. Benner sees the same thing that I'm seeing. He says it's informationless. James, I find it hilarious that you continue to pretend that origin of life researchers are pretending that origin of life research is invalid. Don't you think that's a really dumb lie to be telling? You're, you're definitely just pretending. You're taking, uh, he's having a, a, a lighthearted podcast conversation, and you're pretending that Lee Cronin is going, origin of, life research, origin of life research is stupid. All of my work is stupid. Why would you think anyone would believe that? This okay, is here he is. He wrote it, he, here he puts up this tweet. Origin of life research is a scam. Somebody says, why? He says, because no one is really trying to actually answer the question or thinks it can be done. Okay, so. There it is, Lee Cronin. Yeah, an origin He's of life research. He's sitting in his office tweeting is, is, his stuff. An origin this of is life what I'm researcher talking about. is admitting that his entire body of work is meaningless. That is really. No, he's not saying he's his entire body of work. He's being facetious. He's come and he's being, to a realization of this. If we're being honest, he's slightly come to a re He's come to a realization by looking at the data. He the came material to Jesus. must have come from he outside came to Jesus, the genome. Everybody. Yes, Lee Cronin is pretending all of his work and that of all he's his colleagues is meaningless. He's your favorite advisor. James. He's your man. Over and over oh, again. You, gave, you, wrote him, it on the you board. gave him half of an entire you wrote video of me cronin. If I write not clueless, do I clueless. Does, that, does that win? <laughs> James, you're bringing up synthetic biology because you refuse to engage with the actual research of systems chemistry, which is my next he, prompt. He's so the one who that. said synthetic biologists can't do he's this. He's a synthetic Here's he biologist. Says, he says, He's he, not he says, an origin and of even life today, researcher. Synthetic biologists He's cannot make a cell from scratch. He's building mimics of current extant life. Yeah, He's nobody can do this. Build now. Nobody's good enough. Which Nobody's is good enough today. You ought to do it. Then. Why don't you make research? it happen? What do you the mean? The reason you don't do it because you, the reason you think these guys have everything is because 
You're very shallow in your understanding. You believe this James, nonsense that they put in the title. It said it spectrum. in the title, so it you has to be. I told you the titles you are touch. hyped. They are hyped. Look at the data. I urged you in my opening statement, look at the data. Thousands of researchers, nothing but hype, and only James is right. That sounds really realistic, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm done. I mean, I've, I've, yeah. You want to go on to the next one? Yes. I've got one more prompt, and that's it, so let's do that. Oh, one. I've got plenty. I've got plenty. <laughs> yeah. I'm I got sure plenty that. of barriers you got to get by. The well, yeah. we last one being assemble a you cell just, for me. Your prompts are all just clueless because I so say so. So we don't have clueless a lot of time, so. so it really is going to only be one more okay. volley. All right. Okay. Just well, days. All right. So finally, we get to the most important concept that James is desperately ignoring. This is the one that debunks his idiotic straw man, where he wonders why nobody can synthesize a living cell. After all, if abiogenesis was some molecules floating together and boom, life exists, why can't scientists do it? Well, newsflash, nature also didn't do that. What current science suggests is that RNA molecules with catalytic properties called ribozymes came about, and uh, some of these became self-replicating. And then systems of RNA and proteins enclosed in vesicles complexified over millions of years until a protocell was formed. Of the mountain of relevant literature, here are just a few that show how ribozymes form cooperative cycles and networks, engage in self-sustained replication, and have been demonstrated to evolve by natural selection. James is allergic to discussing anything that invalidates one of his mantras, selection doesn't happen on the molecular level. This is objectively false, and it is the key phenomenon that led from systems of random biomolecules to the first living organism. In order to hand wave away this research, James makes completely unsubstantiated claims like how replicators can only copy 10% of themselves. Nope, fully self-replicating ribozymes were shown as early as 2002, in some cases exhibiting Darwinian evolution, with many other examples by various mechanisms since then. And as early as 2013, ribozymes catalyzed synthesis of RNA longer than itself. Every time James whines about aspects of modern eukaryotic cells that are a product of four billion years of evolution, like CISS, interactomes, or anything having to do with DNA whatsoever, he's just desperately avoiding this mountain of science. He's never read any of this literature. He can't even define the word autocatalysis despite me having taught it to him. And why? Because self-replicating molecules that evolve by natural selection that sounds just a little too relevant to the origin of life, now doesn't it? Good reading and skills. Yeah, yeah, tremendous reading skills. I'm telling you, he's reading from yeah. his videos. You, you don't have to watch his videos, he just read it. The man cannot speak. I, I guess the Chemistry. research okay. isn't real he because I wrote words before reading He has people writing this text for him when he comes in here. I guess let me, the research isn't okay. real because so, Dave wrote so words and read them. So let me answer your them. question. You in, people in your are last, idiots. In your latest video, you said, because I say, well, why don't you just take a dead cell and bring it back to life? because at least everything is kind of there. And he says, oh, you know, and he says, but it actually has been done. He actually says the words, it has been done. James, he, why, why he, are you jumping has, to a completely different topic? We're talking no, about systems No, because chemistry. we're talking about cells. We're talking about the bringing this back to life. Was this, systems man, chemistry. this man stood there and said the that they took was dead systems cells chemistry, and they brought and them back to life. And he's talking about something completely unrelated. Do you no, wonder this is, why? This is because he cannot address this research. Because he's talking about something totally different. He is a gish galloper, no. like Kent Hoven. You, hey, look over here. We don't want to talk no, about you this have research. No, you have we to take that and apply it. You want to apply that, you have to bring... You said that they took dead cells because the pig was dead, James, and so the cells must have been dead, is too. This Let me tell you what we do in our laboratory. We will take a rodent that is dead, take its leg, and keep the cells alive for a week. It was never dead. dead. You cells. said after an hour it came back alive. It was never dead, Dave. Totally misinterpreted yeah, that no, article, was like all but, your articles. But back to what I was talking about, do you agree that this research shows replicators that evolve by natural selection? Because it does. No. Do you? No. no. Oh, okay, so, so Joe no. Joyce is a fraud. You're calling Joe Joyce a fraud right now? You should no, be careful right now. No, because he doesn't. Copy DNA. How much of the DNA did he copy? You uh, read the paper, uh, I read the paper. Fully self-replicating. Fully self-replicating. No, he did not yes. fully self-replicate yes, it. There's not more than 10. Show me, show me. You got the what paper there. No, no, show it. We, no, look, no. He, RNA he, enzyme, do, these are completely yeah. fully self-replicating. Without an You're enzyme, it has never been shown without an enzyme. Do you know what self-replicating means? 
It has, without an enzyme, it has never replicated more than 10% of itself. An autocatalyst is a catalyst look, that makes look, itself. They, from they, the prefix Mr. Farina, you the have the paper. Show okay. us in the paper. What do you, you have mean it? show you the paper? This is the paper that show you're pretending. Show me how much. Did he say that the whole, how much of it was self -replicating. Fully self-replicating. Fully self-replicating, Not fully self-replicating. Not. No. It is not. It is, no, nobody has ever okay. copied more than 10% uh, without okay. an enzyme. Uh, but I don't it, believe it, that. No, but it is. Yeah. So. So uh, let's see. We've got a lot of these. Uh, where are they? Okay. Well, I already showed them. Yeah. Self-sustained replication of an RNA enzyme. Cross-replicating RNA enzymes complete un undergo self-sustained. How, huh? how much was replicated? How much was replicated? How much? James, fully re replicated. It is not fully replicated. No okay. way. There is no what way. We're do, what I we're seeing even right asked now Jack is James that. calling I asked Jack Gerald how much Joyce of this is fraud. replicated. Okay. It is not fully replicated. If yeah, it was fully you're, you're replicated, lying. he it's, would have said it's fully replicated. It 20 is not. 20-fold amplification. They take a long bit, and they, they duplicate this much of it. James, how would it retain catalytic but even, activity? Even if they could, even if they could, <laughs> okay. even if they could duplicate the whole so thing, you're James still is stuck baselessly because because denying a body of work and pretending that no one will notice Where did and the pretending that you, and hoping you'll from? just believe him. Where we did it come from? You couldn't make it. And you oh. can't assemble a cell, and you can't bring one back Switch to life. Switch to something else, right? Switch to something else. Don't look. Don't look at this research. Don't look at fully self-replicating molecules. I guess if I write clueless a bunch of times, I won the debate, right? Should I write not clueless? James, I've showed you prebiotically plausible routes to all of those molecules. All of these you did not show. I asked you specific chemistry. All you can do is write one word. You showed us all no I chemistry can do is because write you one understand word. zero. Every time you you understand clueless, none of clueless, it. Clueless, clueless. Gentlemen, you I... cannot address the research because you don't want it to be true, and we all know I'm why. glad you have mind reading. In addition to all your talents, you can mind read now. I guess Gerald Joyce gentlemen, is a fraud, gentlemen, huh? Gentlemen, he didn't do it. Gentlemen, the, uh, this part of the debate has come to an end. Uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if there is... If there is nothing else we can say, one thing we can say is that it has been a lively debate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's let's do give another round uh, to our debaters for this session. But wait, there is time for questions. Uh, so if you have a question, you're going to have to queue up either on that side or that side, which no, whichever, side right is, uh, 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 right whichever there. side is closest to you. And please, we only have a half an hour. Please limit your question to a single question.